All right. Okay, let's start. Eh? Okay, so today we have about uh, 40 minutes or so, 45 minutes. And I'm going to share with you uh, these four strategies. Eh? Number one, repeated identity concept, equal fraction concept. Number three, external unchanged. And number four, internal transfer, total unchanged. Okay. Now, some of you, uh, now don't worry too much about the name of the uh, of the strategy, right? The name is just, uh, you know, somebody named it, right? But there are many different ways to apply the strategy. Some of the strategy, some of the strategy may be familiar to you, but it can be applied to different topics, different situation. You can use it to solve one mark question. At the same time, you can uh, use the strategy to solve even the four and five mark question. Okay, so if you are familiar uh, to you, is good. If they are not familiar, try to understand. If, if you don't understand, uh, you can always ask me, uh, you know, uh, during the, the session. Okay, by the way, uh, if I'm going too fast, also don't worry too much because uh, there's a lot of things that I need to cover. By the way, this is only part one. Huh? I have uh, at least uh, two other parts, part two, part three. There are many, many strategies, okay, that uh, you should know. And I'm recording this session, and then later on, I will upload it. So, uh, and I will share the link with your parents so you can always, uh, you know, re review this session again and again. Okay, everybody? All right, uh, let's start. Huh? So, another thing I want to remind you is that uh, when I start, uh, please refrain from chatting in the chat function. All right, because it's going to be quite distracting. Okay, you just listen. Okay, and if you have any question, uh, you write it down on a piece of paper. All right, Don't, uh, do not discuss or chat unnecessarily uh, between uh, with, with your friends here. I know some of you, you have friends here. You can see your friends. Uh, there's no need to say hi here. You can say hi, hello when you see your friends. Okay. So please refrain so that we can uh, move very quickly. Okay. And I can cover as much as possible. Okay. Agree, everybody? If not, uh, I can always ban you. Uh. If I see anybody who do not follow the rules, I will ban. Okay. So that you will not, uh, you know, affect uh, the rest who really wants to learn. Okay, everyone? All right. Now, so these are the four uh, strategies that we're going to cover today. All right. The first one is repeated identity concept. Okay. So when do we use this concept? This involves object or person that is repeated in the question. Okay. It can exist in many topics. It can be in topic of fractions, ratio, or percentage. Okay, so for the P5 student, I know you have not learned percentage and uh, maybe just starting to learn ratio. Okay, but not to worry, I'm going to focus on fraction. But the strategy, you can apply it uh, on the topic of ratio as well as percentage. Okay, and there are two methods, two main methods that I'm going to share with you. Number one is using model. Number two is using uh, units. Now, some of you may know this topic, but you are familiar with the model method. You are not familiar with the units method. So today I'm going to share with you both methods uh, so that when you uh, see the questions, you can see and you can apply which uh, type or which method you find most comfortable. Is it okay? Now let's take a look at this question. Eh? Okay, so I give you all two minutes. Now can you try to solve this question? This is quite easy and straightforward. Okay, now everybody solve. Try and solve this question using the piece of paper. You can use your calculators, no problem. Adam, have you tried? Okay, Sarah, no worries. Uh, can you solve this question? This is the first strategy that we're going to learn. Uh, repeated identity. Keep change rate. No, keep change rate is division of fraction. All right, this is not on division of fractions. Huh? This is strategy is called, okay, you can use any strategy. Okay, to solve this question doesn't matter. All right. Ilham, have you gotten the answer? Rindra confused. Okay, try. Eh? I want everybody to try. I give you all two more minutes.
Ilhan, easy. What's your answer? Isaac got 16. Joshua, you don't know? Rao 16. Oh, 16 seems to be a very popular answer. Eh? Okay, very good. Now let's solve together. Let's solve together. All right. <clears throat> Now, let's read. Uh, Alex have 2 over 7 as many marbles as Ben, right? And half as many marbles as Charles. So, we should ask ourselves, who has more, who has less? So, you can see 2 over 7, right? This one, oh, too thick, uh, sorry. Okay, so Alex has 2 units. Okay, these 2 units represent Alex. And 7 units represent Ben, right? At the same time, they say that Alex has half as many marbles as Charles. So you can see here, Alex is repeated. So now for between Alex and Charles, Alex has one unit and Charles has two units. Okay, so that's why we call this strategy repeated identity. Okay, now let's form a model. Let's solve using a model. Huh? Okay, so Alex has two over seven. Let's compare Alex and Ben first. Huh? So Alex, two units and Ben has seven units. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. So that is the first fraction given to you. Okay, so Alex two units and Ben seven units. So the next thing is that they are comparing Alex with Charles. So Alex with Charles, there's another fraction, right, which is half. So if Alex is half as Charles, that means Charles has twice as much as Alex. So if Alex has two units here, right, so Charles must have four units. Okay, all of you understand so far? Okay, so you can see here that Alex is repeated, right? Alex is repeated. Okay, so you can see from here the model is very clear. And the other clue that they give you is that they have a total of 104 marbles. Okay, so everything here is 104, right? Easy, right? So how many units is 104? Thirteen. Units. Correct not? 13 units. Uh, let me go back slightly. Yeah? Now you can see here. Uh, okay, that 13 units. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Right? So 13 unit is 104. Okay, and next you need to find one unit, right? And then they ask you how many marbles did Alex have? So Alex have one, two units. Okay. So can see that one unit is eight, two units is 16. So Alex has 16 marbles. Got it, everyone? Easy, right? Who, who did not get 16? Okay, well done. Huh? Those of you who got 16, very, very good. Easy, right? Okay, very good. Okay, so now I'm going to show you another technique. Instead of model, we are going to use the units method. Okay, we are going to use the Units method. So let's see how it is done. Eh? Same question. So Alex has 2 over 7 as many marbles as Ben. So I write down in the form of unit. So Alex 2 unit, Ben 7 units. So they give you another fraction, right? Alex has, is half as many marbles as Charles. So Alex 1 unit and Charles 2 units. Okay? Right. So uh, since Alex is mentioned twice, right? Alex is repeated. So what we need to do is that we need to make Alex the same. Okay, we need to make Alex in this set and this set. We need to make them the same. Why? Because the number of marbles that Alex have is the same. Correct, right? Okay. So what we do? We need to find the lowest common multiple of Alex. Okay. Do you know the reason? The reason why we need to make Alex the same is so that we can come. Pair, right? We can compare between these two set of fractions. Okay. Now let's take a look next. Huh? So since in the first ratio or the first set of fractions, Alex is two unit and the second set is Alex is one unit. So what we do is we find the lowest common multiple of one and two, right? Which is two. Okay. So you multiply by two to Alex and then remember to multiply by two to Charles also, right? Because this is connected. This comes in one set. We multiply by 2 here. 
P also we multiply by 2, so I will get 1 unit times 2 equals to 2. 2 units times 2, I get 4. Right? Okay. Next. What we do next is that we make use of the clue given to you, which is they have a total of 104 marbles altogether. Okay? Now, once we have done this, then we can uh, continue. Right? We can continue to find how many units does 104 represents, right? So since A is 2 units, B is 7 units, and C is 4 units, we'd, we'd add them up. 2 plus 7, 9, 9 plus 4, you get 13, right? So 13 units is 104, 1 unit is 14. Oh, sorry, yeah. Okay, uh, 8, this should be 8 here. Huh? Should be 8. Okay, so 2 units will be 8 times 2, you get 16. So Alex says, 16 marbles. All right. Okay, so all of you got it? Quite okay, right? Okay, now can you tell me which method you prefer or which method you usually do? Uh, the model method or the units method? Model method. Some of you using me method too. Huh? So no problem. Uh, depends on which you are more comfortable with. The problem with model method is that it can be quite complex if you need to cut into many, many pieces. Okay, imagine you need to cut, say, into 72 pieces, right? So I always encourage my students to try to learn the uni three method, right? Because uh, model methods, even though it is very visual, it has some limitations. The more challenging questions, you may need to uh, upgrade or you need to learn uh, to use the uni three method so that you can solve the problem faster. Okay, everyone? Okay, now. Nah? Okay, some of you, you are not that good in model method. No problem. Huh? If you want to use everything uni three method, I strongly encourage you also. But some of you prefer to mix. Some of you prefer to use model method for some questions and uni three method for some questions. No problem. That is even better. Okay, the, the thing is that you must learn as many strategies as possible so that when you see the different types of questions, you are able to apply accordingly. Okay? Okay? All right. Let's take a look at the next strategy okay the next strategy is called equal concept or equal fraction now this strategy is very very common eh? even in last year psle there was uh, at least one question which require you to use this concept okay but of course there are va many variations okay so please don't just learn one concept and that's it eh? there can be many variations and you may need to uh, change uh, the strategies slightly Okay, to suit the question. Remember, PSLE questions uh, are very, very tricky and uh, they are very, uh, you know, PSLE questions, it's not very straightforward at times. Okay, you may sometimes use a different, different strategy to solve the question. So it can be very creative. Okay. So the more you're exposed to the different types of question, the better you are at scoring uh, high marks for your PSLE maths. Okay. Now, uh, let's take a look. Uh, for this fraction, it's called equal fraction. Don't worry too much about the name. Okay, let's see how this uh, strategy can be applied to some questions. Uh. So, the purpose is to compare two fractions that represent equal quantities. Okay, the keyword that you see in the question is equals to, equal number, same as. And you can use the model as well as the units method. Okay, now let's take a look at the first question. Uh. Okay, in a group of 20 students, half of the number of boys is equal to three quarter the number of girls. How many girls are there in class? Okay, so I give you two minutes to solve. You have your uh, papers, writing material, and calculators, right? So I give you two minutes to solve. Okay, can you do that now? Okay, one more minute, one more minute. Some of you got seven, Isa, are you sure it's the answer is seven? Some of you got 12, some of you got 15. 
wait to it make the numerator the same you got 8 15 some of you got 8 okay please check your answers huh? one more minute then we will discuss the answers okay yes don't worry about my face face cam huh? now i changed to avatar avatar Adila, have you gotten your answer? Siti? You don't know the question? Isha, come on. You got 96, you know, for your maths, right? Or 92 last year. Anna, clue is not 15. Okay, let's discuss. Huh? Are we ready to discuss? Uh, those of you who got eight, very good. The answer is actually eight. Huh? The answer is eight. All right, but don't worry, we'll discuss together. Is it okay? Okay, huh? okay. No, huh? don't worry, we'll discuss. Huh? Okay, now let's take a look at this question. In a group of 20 students, half of the number of boys is equal to three quarter of number of girls. Now, first question is the number of boys equal to number of girls? Is number of boys equal to number of girls? No, right? And this is the first thing that you need to know. But what they tell you is that half of the boys is equal to three quarter of number of girls. Then how many girls are there in the class? Okay, so I'm going to show you using model met method first. Eh? Now, first, half of the boys. Now, you got the boys here, right? This is uh, two units and one unit, right? Half of it is equal to three quarter of the girls, right? This is three out of four. Okay, so all of you understand this model. Eh? Half of the boys is equal to three quarter of the girls. But there's a problem here because you cannot compare, right? You cannot compare because the number of units are different size. Okay, what you need to do, you need to divide this into three and divide this into three also. Correct? Okay, let's divide the model. Eh? So after you divide the model, okay, into smaller pieces, then you can see that the boxes are of the same size when they are the same size then you can make comparison okay and we have not made use of this clue huh? they tell you that a group of 20 students so you can see 20 students represent everything right so you just count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten okay so 10 unit is 20 and one unit is 2 20 divided by 10 equals to 2 then they ask you, how many girls are there in the class? The girls is one, two, three, four, right? So there are eight girls in the class. So this is the answer. All of you got it? Understand? Very good. Okay, Yunho. Yunho should not be any problem, right? Ilhan, no problem. Okay, so... Uh, so you can see from this model, uh, let's recap a little bit. Uh, so you can see half of the boys, this half of the boys, right? This is the total number of boys. This represents the total, right? This represents the total. And out of these six units, three units of the boys, which is half, is equals to three quarter of the girls. So the shaded part represents the part which is equal. Okay? Now, okay, so you can see here total 20 which is the total number of students is 10 units. So you just count the number of boxes. Okay, make sure the, the, the size of the boxes are equal, right? You cannot, if they are not equal, then you need to divide it accordingly. Okay, so the answer is eight girls. Okay, now, is there alternative method? Is there an alternative method? Anybody know? Yes, what's the alternative method? Okay, I'm going to, yes, unitary method. Okay, I'm going to show you unitary method, which is even easier, right? Now, modern method, like I say, there are limitations. Right? Sometimes, imagine if you have to cut into 92 pieces or 48 pieces, for example. So, it's, it's going to be quite difficult, especially those students who have very, uh, you know, your handwriting is not that neat, right? You have problems uh, drawing models. So, there are limitations. So, today, I'm going to teach you using unitary method. Okay, and I hope you learn and remember so that you can have, uh, you know, more options to solve uh, questions. Huh?
Okay. You know, this is the Oops. Okay, this sorry, this is another question. Okay. Now, uh, let uh, let me show you how to do this uh, using unitary method. Huh? Now, let's take a look at this. Huh? They say that half of the boys is equal to three quarter of the girls. So, I'm going to write down here. So, half of the boys, right, is equals to three quarter of the girls. Huh? Uh, apologies for the handwriting because I'm using my mouse to write. Huh? Okay. So what you need to do is that you need to make the numerator the same. Okay, how? By finding the lowest common multiple. This is one and this is three, right? So what's the lowest common multiple of one and three? Three, correct or not? So what you do, you multiply by three, and here also you times three. Remember, if you multiply three to the numerator, you need to multiply by three to the denominator as well, right? So that you can get uh, equivalent fraction. Okay, when you multiply by three, numerator, denominator, you cannot see the handwriting. You sure? Okay, so then you get three over six. Okay, you get three over six. You know, can you see or not? Out of three, all you can see the my handwriting. Okay, you can see, yeah? all right. So let's compare now. Huh? So after you make the numerator the same, now let's compare the unitary method and the model method. You can see this three is the same as the shaded part, right? And six here represent the total, right? Six represent the total for the boys, and four represents the total as for the for the girls. Okay? And they tell you that there are 20 students. So 20 students, what you need to do, you just need to add the denominators. So six plus four equals to 10, right? And you can see that 10 equivalent to 10 units okay and 10 units is 20 so the rest is the same as exactly the same as this part so you can see the difference is that you don't have to use model correct right? you don't have to use model and you just need to make the numerator the same by finding the lowest common multiple right so do you find it easier much easier much faster correct right? okay power right Teacher, why not change the same numerator? Yeah, exactly. That's what we have done, just done, right? Change the numerator. Okay? All right. Now, let us let me give you a little bit slightly more challenging question. Eh? Okay. Let's solve. Okay. I want you to solve this. Can you all do this using the unitary method that I've taught you just now? Okay. Can all of you do this? I give you all three minutes to do. Can? Okay? You can use your calculators. No problem. You solve yourself first, everybody solve yourself, then later I'm going to discuss together, don't worry. Faris, don't worry, you try first. If you cannot, then we will solve together. Huh? Oh, very good. I got three answers ready. Huh? Adija, Sora, Isaac. Sarah, why are you scared? Don't, don't worry. Huh? Practice. You don't know. Don't know. Try. Practice. Huh? 150. 2 to 5. Okay, very good. I think all of you gotten the answer. Most of you have gotten the answer. The answer is 225 centimeters. Very good. Okay, let's do this together. So for those of you who are still struggling, not very sure. So please listen very carefully. Okay, let's take a look at this question. Eh? So one quarter of Tony's height is the same as 2 over 7 as Mary's height. Now we know that Tony's height is not the same as Mary's height, right? But they tell you that one quarter of Tony's height is the same as 2 over 7 as Mary's height. Okay? Then if Tony is 120 centimeters tall, find the total height of the, of the two children. 
Now let's take a look at the model method first. Okay, so you have one quarter, one quarter, which is four. So you draw four units here, and one quarter, which is one unit, right? Which is it will be the same as two over seven as Mary side. So we draw for Mary two units which is shaded, and here and her total is seven units. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now can we compare first right now? Can we compare between Tony and Mary? We cannot, right? Because you can see that the boxes are of different size. That means the units are different. You cannot, right? And you can see that if you split this into two, you divide into two for Tony, then you can make the units the same, right? The boxes the same. Then you can compare, right? Okay. So in order to compare, we divide each big boxes into two smaller boxes to make all boxes of the same size. So this is what we do. As you can see, it's the same now. And next, we are going to use the clue that's given to you. They say that Tony is 120 centimeters tall. So Tony, the whole thing is 120. So remember, this whole thing represents Tony, and it is 120 centimeters. Okay? So, so far, so good. Huh? Now, remember, I told you to we learn about the unitary method, right? By making the, denom the numerator the same. Now, let's try the unitary method. Right? The model method, you can see. Now, the, the unitary method is where you need to make the numerators the same. Okay? Now, some of you may have learned uh, that to use unitary method, you make the numerator the same, but you do not know why. What is the reason? Then you get confused. Sometimes you need to make numerator the same, sometimes you make denominator the same. So, what is the reason? So, this is where I'm going to share with you. I'm going to show you what is the reason so that when you apply the strategy, you understand do not and not you know just uh you know apply blindly okay so i'm going to show you why to make the numerator the same you can you can only understand this if you draw the model okay so the first thing is that they tell you that one quarter of tony side is the same as two over seven as mary side so this is i'm just writing this down in the form of an equation right one quarter okay uh, of Tony side equals to 2 over 7 of Mary side. Okay. And what do we do? We make the numerator the same. How? See, numerator is 1 unit and 2 units. The lowest common multiple is, is 2, right? So you times 2 to the numerator uh, here of Tony and you multiply by 2 as well to the denominator of Tony, right? So you times 2, times 2, times 2 here, times 2, and you get 2 out of 8. Okay. So then you notice that. The total for Tony changes, right? Okay, let's compare between this and, and this. So you can see here, 2 here, right, represent the part which is the same, the shaded part. And the denominator represent the total for each of the people, pupils, right? So 8 units represent the Tony side. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And the total height for Mary is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right? Which is exactly the same as, as the denominator here, okay? So from here, then you can see that, okay? So you can see that Tony's side is 120 centimeters, right? And Tony's side is 8 units, okay? So then... We get that 8 units is 120 centimeters. So we divide by 120 divided by 8. You get 1 unit, which is 15 centimeters. And then 15 units. Why 15 units? Because the answer find the total height of the two children. So the total height, if you use the unit 3 method, you simply add up the add the denominator. Right? 8 units plus 7 units, you get 15 units. If you use the model method, you just add the count the number of boxes for both, right? Because the question asks, find the total height of the two children. Okay? Answer everybody? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy? Okay? Very good. Okay, yeah? Okay, very good. Okay, so we are done with uh, strategy number two. So we are going to move on to the next strategy. Okay, just now this is the same. Huh? So there's no need to draw a model. Huh? Okay, easy, right? No need to draw a model. Okay, so the next uh, strategy is what we call external 
transfer with unchanged quantity concept. Wow, very, very complex. Sound very complex, huh? but actually it's not that complex. Okay. Uh, okay. When do we use this strategy? Yeah? We use this strategy, all right, when only one of the variable in the question changes. When only one of the variable in the question changes, either it is added or removed, okay, in one of the variable. I will give you an example later on, eh? okay, and you can use both the model and the units method, okay. Example here, Ellen and Ben have some marbles in a certain ratio, okay. Ben gives some marbles away to Charles. Charles is a third party, that means not involved. Eh? The first, this is the first two variables, Ellen and Ben. So Ben gave some marbles away to Charles, right? And the ratio of number of Ellen's marble to Ben's marble changes. So you can see that Ben is unchanged. Correct not? There's no change to Ben. Only Ellen changes. So when this scenario is given to you, we can use this strategy called external unchange with external transfer with total unchanged. Uh, sorry. Uh, external unchanged method okay external transfer with unchanged quantity concept or sometimes we simply call this strategy external unchanged method okay external unchanged method okay let's take a look at a question huh? okay let's take a look at this question okay alex has twice as many stems as bernard then Alex used 25 stem. Alex now has one third as many stems as Bernard. How many stems do both of them have in the end? So you notice that only one change, right? Who is changed here? Who is changed? Who is changed in this question? Only Alex, right? Is there any change to Bernard? There's no change to Bernard, right? Okay, so because Alex used and Bernard did not use anything. Okay, so at first, Alex has twice. So you can see here, one and two. So Alex has twice as much as, as Bernard. Okay, and they say that Alex used, and then in the end, Alex have only one third. So one, one, two, three. Okay, so in the end, Alex have one unit and Bernard has three units. So the shaded part represents the stems used, right? And the stems used is 25. Okay, so 5 units is 25. Why 5? Because this represents 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5 units is 25. 1 unit is 5. And how many stems do they have in the end, which is 4 units? And I get 20 as the, as the answer. Okay, David, no worries. Okay, if you don't, uh, you cannot cash, no problem. Later on when I upload, you can always uh, review, play, re uh, revive, uh, review, rewind, and then play again. Eh? So that, that, that's why that's a good thing about this webinar. Okay, now let's take a look at how we solve using the units method. So just now was the model method. So let's see how we solve using the, the units method. Okay. Now, I give all of you a chance. Can all of you do using the units method right now? The same question, and I want you to use the units method. Some of you may be familiar, all right? Okay, I want you all to try. I give you all two minutes to try using the units method. You should get exactly the same answer. Yes, the answer is 20, but all of you, do you know how to use the method? How to use this strategy? Don't know? Okay, no problem. Huh? I will share with you how to do. 
Yeah, you should get exactly the same answer, 20. Okay, so, but just now was the model method. So now I'm going to show you how to use the units method, shortcut method. Okay, if you use shortcut method, better, right? Anna, don't worry, I'm going to share with you. Eh? Aisha, don't understand, no problem. So I'm going to show you using the shortcut method. Eh? Okay, are we ready? Ready now? Okay, let's do together. Eh? Let's do together, right? Okay, so first, they tell you that Alex has twice as many stamps as Bernard. So we're going to do step by step. So Alex has twice. So I write down this set of units, right? Or this set of ratio. So Alex has twice. So Alex, two units. Bernard, one unit. All of you got this? All of you should understand, right? Isaac, do you understand this? Alex has twice as many as Bernard. So I write down before, in the beginning, Alex, two units. Bernard, one unit. You understand, right? Okay, what happened next? Then Alex used 25 stamps. So Alex used. So that means he used 25 stamps, right? Alex used 25 stamps. So in the end, after Alex used 25 stamps, now Alex has one third as many stamps as Bernard. So this is the fraction after. Right in the end, or after Alex used, now Alex has only one third as many as Bernard. So I write down in this way: so Alex one unit, Bernard is three units. Okay. Now then we analyze. Since only Alex used, Bernard did not use anything. So Bernard must be the same, correct? Or not Bernard. There's no change in number of stamps that Bernard has. So if Bernard initially one unit, in the end three units. So what do we need to do? We need to make Bernard the same. Correct not? How to make Bernard the same? By finding the lowest common multiple, right? What's the lowest common multiple of 1 and 3? Three? 3, correct. You multiply by 3. So we need to multiply by 3 to this set of uh, fractions or ratio. So we multiply by 3. So let's see how we multiply by 3. So you can see here. I multiply by 3 to Bernard in this set of ratio. When I multiply by 3, here also I must multiply by 3, right? Because this comes in a set. Okay, if I multiply by 3, here also I must multiply by 3. So now Alex has 6 units and Bernard has 3 units. Okay, so we can see now the Bernard is the same, right? So when Bernard is the same, then we can compare between these two set of fractions, right? Or these two set of units. Okay, so next we are going to apply the clue that is given to us, which is Alex use 25 step. So let's take a look. Huh? Initially, Alex has six unit. Then in the end, he has one unit. So what happened? There is a decrease by five units. What is the reason in the decrease of these five units? Because he has used 25 stem, right? He has used 25 stems. Okay, so that's why 5 units is equals to 25. And then we find 1 unit, which is 25 divided by 5. We get 5. Okay, and then they ask you, how many stamps do both of them have in the end? This is very important. Huh? They say in the end. So in the end means you need to take a look at this, right? Which is 3 plus 1. You get 4 units. So 4 units is, you just multiply 5 times 4, right? You get 20 as answer. Okay? Understand? Very good. Okay, I'm very happy that some of you understand now. Okay, everybody, if you don't understand, no problem. Later on, uh, you can uh, you can review this video again when I upload uh, on our YouTube channel. Okay? Then? Okay, we 848. We are left with uh, just a few more minutes. We got one more strategy to share with you for today. Okay, next one is what we call internal transfer with total unchanged. Okay, internal transfer with total unchanged. Have you heard of this strategy before? No? No chat? Yes? No? Okay, some of you have not. Huh? So, so, please take a look, listen carefully. Now, when do we use this? Huh? When do we use this strategy? So, these concepts involve changes that takes place internally 
or changes that involve mutual exchange. Example, Alan and Ben have some marbles in certain ratio. Then Ben gives some marbles to Alan. Okay, so the ratio of number of marbles Alan and Ben have changes, but the total number of marbles before and after the transfer remains the same. So it means that there's no change to the total, right? Because they are just simply giving one another. Example, uh, let's say Alan has $10. Ben also has $10. Okay, so total both of them have $20. Correct, not? Both of them have $20. Now, if Alan gave Ben $5, now Alan will be left with $5. And Ben will now have $15. Right, when you add them up, it is still $20. When you add them up, it becomes 20. <coughs> Initially, it was 10 plus 10, right? Also equals to 20. So you can see that there is no change in their total. Okay, there's no change in the total. All of you understand? Okay, so when there's no change in the total, then you can make use of this strategy that I'm going to share with you. And we can use both the model and the unitary method. Okay? Now, maybe if you see the example, the question, then you can understand. Eh? Okay, let's take a look at a question. Eh? Okay, now I want all of you to, to solve this. I'll give you two minutes to do this. I'm going to show you using unitary method, shortcut method. Eh? Two more minutes, try, huh? please try. Okay, do on your piece of paper that you have. You can use your calculators, no problem. Any method that you want to use, no problem. Oh, a lot of you got 18 as the answer. Huh? I'll give you a clue. It's not 18. 18 is not the answer. Thirty-six is also not the answer. Twenty is also not the answer. Isaac seventy-four is also not the answer. Four is also not the answer. Twelve is also not the answer. Twenty-four is not the answer. 144 is not the answer. Try, try. Check, ah. don't anyhow one time, ah. please. Think properly. I give you two more minutes. Two more minutes, everyone. And I know, of course, I will explain. Okay, don't worry, try. My brain is having a meltdown. Rindra, try. Huh? Six is not the answer. 60 is the answer. Yes, 60 is the answer. Very good. 16, no. 
not 16, 60, 60. Okay, so now everybody get, almost everyone get the answer. Some of you have not tried. Okay, don't worry, uh, if you are stuck, I'm going to explain. Uh. Okay, so you got two also to you. I, I understand some of you are tired. Uh. Okay, remember in the PSLE, uh, it is sometimes a test of your perseverance and endurance. Uh, because uh, your maths paper, uh, paper one is you're given one hour to do. And then after that, you have a short break. And then you have to do paper two. Paper two is another one and a half hour. And you know all the killer question comes in paper two. So after paper one, I think you will be quite tired, right? So you need to persevere and uh, be able to have a fresh uh, brain quickly so that you're able to uh, do paper two, okay? And for just a kind of a benchmark, for every each one mark question, you have about one minute to solve. Two mark question, you have about two minutes. So the five mark questions, which is the last few questions in paper two, you have about five minutes to solve five mark questions. Okay, and four minutes to solve the four mark question. Uh, it's quite challenging, okay, but you must train. Okay, but the good thing is that you have about seven more months. Okay, you need to practice every single day, every single day, especially those of you, you know, if you did not score well enough last year, if you score 50 and less, 30%, 20%, right? You need to make lots of effort so that you can pass, uh, at least pass PSLE maths. Okay, those of you who are scoring B and C, you can push yourself to score an A. Those of you who are scoring A, you can push yourself to score an, an A star. Okay, but you need to make the effort every single day. Not just come for tuition once a week, then the rest of the time you don't do anything. Okay, you, you need practice again and again and again. Okay? All right, let's see how to solve this question. Eh? Now, Tom has half the number of bubbles as Ben at first. After Ben gave 12 of his marble, Tom had two-thirds the number of marbles Ben had. So, you can see, the first clue given to you is that you know that this is a case of internal transfer. How do you know it's internal transfer? Because Ben gave 12 of his marble to Tom. It's not that he gave to or he... He sold uh, the, the bumbles, right? He gave to Tom. So there is no change in the total. So when we know there's no change in the total, that's where we are going to make use of the strategy, the total unchanged. So first thing you need to list down the units, right? The first ratio and the second ratio, before and after. So at first, Tom has half the number of marbles as Ben. So Tom, one unit, Ben has two units. Okay, that's the first thing. Eh? And then secondly, the second uh, in the second fraction, they tell, tell you that Tom had two-thirds the number of marbles Ben had. So in the end, Tom has two units, Ben has three units. Now, since we know it is a total unchanged, right, we know that it's total unchanged, we need to find another step, right? We need to do another step, which is to find the total. So at first, Tom one unit, Ben two units, so total is three units. And the end, since Tom is two units, Ben three units, the total is five units. And remember, the total unchanged means what? Before and after, the total is the same. Okay? So when the total is the same, you need to find the lowest common multiple, okay, to find the common total. Right? So what's the lowest common multiple of five and three, which is 15, right? Very good. So what we need to do, we multiply by five, to the total, you get 15 units, and multiply by 3 to the total, we get 15 units as well. And remember, when we multiply by 5 to the total, everything also we must multiply by 5, right? Because these are all interconnected. Equivalent, remember the concept of equivalent ratio, huh? let's say half. Half is equals to 2 over 4, right? How you get 2 over 4? We multiply by 2 to the numerator, and we must also multiply by 2 to the denominator, right? So this is a concept of equivalent fraction which all of you have learned. So likewise here, if you multiply by 5 to the total, everything must times 5. Likewise here, if you multiply by 3, everything also you must times 3. So many students forget this. Okay, so you multiply by 5, I get 5 units here. Multiply by 5 to Ben, I get 5 units. I get 10 units. 2 times 5 equals to 10. Right? In the end, Tom, I multiply 2 times 3, I get 6. Ben, 3 times 3, I get 9 units. Right? So total 15 units. Okay? 
Next, what we are going to do, we need to analyze by using the, the clue given to us, right? So you can see here, Ben gave 12 marbles to Tom. So let's analyze. Huh? At first, Tom has five units. After that, he has six units, right? So there is an increase by one unit. Likewise, Ben, at first, he has 10 units and then became nine units. Now, do you know why? Do you know why? Okay, I'm going to repeat. Huh? Since some of you asked me to slow down, I'm going to repeat. All right, so what we do, first, we multiply, we make the total the same. Okay, we make the total the same, right? So here, the total at first is three units. In the end, the total is five units. So how to make the same? We find the lowest common multiple of five and three. Like lowest common multiple of five and three is 15, right? So how to get 15? Three times five, I get 15. Okay? And if I times five to the total, this also I must multiply by five, right? So one times five, I get five. Two times five, I get 10. Three times five, I get 15. Okay? All right, and for, in the end, so I want to get 15 units, right? So five times three, I get 15. So likewise, I times three to Ben here and times three to Tom, I get six is to nine, okay? So at first, you can see that Tom five units. In the end, Tom became six units, right? So why was there an increase by one unit? Because he received 12 marbles from Tom. So that means one unit is equal to 12. So we can check for Ben also. At first, Ben got 10 units, right? In the end, Ben got 9 units. Why? Because Ben gave 12 marbles to Tom, right? Ah, very good. So one unit is 12. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. Huh? Okay, so one unit is 12. So they asked you, in the end, how many marbles did Tom have at first? So at first, it's not this one unit. Huh? At first, is the one that you after you multiply right which is five units so five units is five times 12 you get 60 marbles okay you get 60 marbles okay is that easy right uh some of you careless huh i think some of you careless because why you leave the answer as 12 huh? okay this is a very common mistake right because you never state the working very clearly right you can see here you must multiply by 5. You do not use the one which is 1 unit, right? Because this is not correct yet. You need to multiply by 5 so that then you can compare, okay? Got it, everybody? Okay, so this is done for today. Four strategies, and I have many, 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 many strategies to share with you, okay? And uh, some of it I'll be sharing, uh, I mean, we are doing in class. Right, in our online lesson, I will have regular online lesson which I share with you. So tomorrow, I have part two. Uh. Tomorrow, we are going to have part two uh, at 8 o'clock. So if you have not booked the online lesson, you can book. Okay, so I'm going to cover, maybe tomorrow, I will cover four again. Okay, I may not have time to cover all six. Okay, I will cover constant different branching method, number times value, and so on. Uh. And part three, maybe we have another session. Okay. Okay, class. All right. Any question? Any question? It's ready 902. Huh? We have extended, exceeded by quite a while. 8 p.m., not 8 a.m. Huh? 8 a.m., uh, all of you in school. Okay? It should be 8 p.m. No questions? Okay. No question. Thank you very much. Okay. And uh, I'll see you again in class or tomorrow, during the lesson tomorrow. Okay? All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.